Ladies and gentlemen, let's not beat around the bush. A bunch of benchmarks have leaked for the Ryzen 9 7950X3D. These compare the 7950X3D against the 13900K, as well as the vanilla 7950X, and also uses the RTX 4090, as well as the 7900XTX. And all of this is courtesy of a reviewer's guide, which has gotten linked to hdtechnologica.com. So, of course, credit to them. I will leave a link to their website in the video description. Now, for those who don't know, a reviewer's guide is very typical for... Um, well, reviewers to get sent alongside the hardware. This isn't so that we can essentially cheat and take their numbers down, but it's basically not only to tell us how to plug in a PCIe connector, but also just as a sanity check. For example, let's say a particular configuration gets 100 frames a second with the reviewer's guide. We're testing it and we're getting like 170 or 50 frames a second. You can say, well, with my advanced powers of reviewer deduction, I'm probably going to say that there's something wrong so either i've really screwed up with the configuration or there's something else that's happening here and then if absolute worst comes to the worst you can contact let's say your pr rep and say hey something's not quite right i'm experiencing this issue can you help me out so anyway, let's take a look at the 13900K pitted against the 7950X3D. This is with the 7900XTX. I'm going to go over these quite quickly because I think the 4090 results are more pertinent. But on average here, we're seeing a 5.6% improvement for the 7950X3D. So Zen 4D is not a huge amount faster. Of course, it does depend upon the game. Um, Watch Dogs Legion, for example, and a couple of other titles like Cyberpunk. It's basically a wash. Um, unfortunately, some of the settings used in a per-game basis aren't clear. So, for example, is Cyberpunk um, running with all of the ray tracing settings? What's kind of, you know, what's going on with that? We don't know. Some games, I would also say, they're a little old or irrelevant. That's my personal opinion. For example, Dios X. Um, I would probably say that uh, I'd add Middle Earth into that. I don't know if it's worth putting it in there, but hey, I'm sure there are people who are still regularly playing the title. But now let's shift the gears to the 7950X3D versus the 13900K and the 7950X. In this particular instance, we have, well, it versus the 40, using a 4090, so obviously there's a bit more GPU headroom. As a... TLDR though, it's a 6% improvement over the 13900K, however, we are looking at a 16% improvement over the 7950X. So, obviously that's a decent gain over the vanilla processor, but it's not exactly huge over the 13900K. Intel do have the 13900KS, but it's only a couple of percent faster, so it's not very difficult to kind of just add a couple of percentage figures. So now let's have a look at a couple of benchmarks for various applications. Long story short, Geekbench, we are seeing 2170 for the single core score. Meanwhile, it's 2262. Of course, this will depend a lot on different configurations, BIOSes, that type of thing. Multi-core score, 23,380. So it's a little slower than the 3900K. And we could also say much the same thing for Cinebench as well. So what do I think of all this? Well, honestly, it's still a little early because honestly this is only a reviewer's guide in my personal experience i've found that reviewers guides typically are quite conservative in performance i've generally found it's a little faster um, especially if there's been a bios update this is particularly true however i certainly wouldn't um expect this to like you know be drastically different there's also the pricing side of things which is also kind of difficult to quantify for example, the 13900KS is 704 uh, 99 that's great british pounds meanwhile if we did a quick checkaroo to the 13900k we're looking at 584 um great uh, great british pounds the 13900k in the us on amazon at the moment is 570 us dollars and according to amd's own pricing we're looking at 700 bucks of course for the 7950X3D, and this was reported um, at the first, I think it was of February. So what does that mean? Well, basically speaking, um, if we're taking out everything else, if we're just talking about the pure CPU, 
the 13900K is a little cheaper. The KS is obviously around the same pricing. Um, it's, of course, way too early yet. This is not a review at the end of the day. We're going to have to wait for the official benchmarks. It's going to be very interesting to see how this compares. Um, it's going to also be a case, of course, of power consumption, a bunch of other crap, which is not just related to performance, such as availability. And uh, let's say you've already bought like an AM5 motherboard and you've been waiting on the 7950X 3D, then obviously that's a pretty easy thing to decide. With all of that said, thank you very much for checking out the video. Hopefully you have enjoyed it. If you did, you know what to do. Leave a likey on the video and all of that stuff. And I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.